Johan, in the global risk report of the World Economic Forum, climate risk is on top of the agenda. How bad is the situation? The situation is, is really worrying. We are at 1.2 degrees Celsius warming already today. This is the warmest temperature on Earth since we left the last ice age. And within the next 10 years, we may reach 1.5 degrees Celsius. And scientifically, we today show clearly that's a physical limit. Go beyond it and we risk triggering many tipping points. The Greenland ice sheet, the West Antarctic ice sheet that represents 10 meter sea level rise, but also abrupt thawing of permafrost, which will amplify warming even more. So the risks are real. But what I find really significant in this year's World Economic Forum's Global Risk Report is that in the top five, it's climate change, it's geopolitical instability, it's the food system crisis, and it's risks to the global economy due to inflation, which just shows that we're intermeshed in a, in a global crisis situation where climate change is at the core because climate impacts on food, climate impacts on energy, climate impacts on stability in societies. So it's really a... Uh, kind of a complex of many interacting crises at the same time. So there's lots of talk about adaptation due to the climate crisis. Does that mean that we can't avoid the crisis? Well, I'm quite concerned about the fact that we uh, tend to focus very much on loss and damage, on adaptation, when we need to accelerate the pathway to mitigate and reduce emissions, and we're not making progress, the curve of emission continues rising. At the same time, research shows that we're coming closer to limits of adaptation, meaning that we come to a point where people cannot adapt anymore, and the only choice then is to move. We get climate refugees. So we're in a very delicate situation. We need adaptation for sure, but we have to accelerate the mitigation, not to come too far uh, at a point where, where we can no longer have adaptation, where farming systems collapse or where uh, freshwater systems don't work anymore. You have two sessions here about situation at the poles. Why should we care about the situation at the poles? Well, to begin with, in the Arctic is warming four times faster than the global mean surface temperature rise. So if we are at 1.2 degrees Celsius, both Antarctica and the Arctic has already reached 3 degrees Celsius. They are melting very fast. They represent over 10 meters sea level rise. But not only that, just the Arctic and Antarctica together hold six of the big tipping point systems. We're talking permafrost, we're talking boreal forest, we're talking the Greenland ice sheet, we're talking the Arctic winter ice, we're talking the West Antarctic ice sheet, and we're talking the Barents Sea ice. And if these are pushed too far, they will irreversibly start moving in a direction that will amplify warming, and they are interconnected with the ocean circulation of heat, they even impact on the monsoon systems. So what happens in the Arctic will impact on rainfall over the Amazon rainforest. So it's all interconnected. And I can today say that scientifically, I would argue that the Arctic is the ground zero on planet Earth. It's the place that is changing fastest and where we take the largest risks of pushing systems that are part of the operating system of the entire planet. Johan, do you have any good news for us also with regards to the climate crisis? Well, the good news, the part of good news is that we today have so many solutions, technologies, practices, systems, everything from electric mobility to uh, wind power and solar voltaics that actually compete without subsidies with fossil fuel systems. So from a business leader or, or an economic perspective, it makes sense to invest in sustainability, not only to reduce risks of unmanageable damage, but also because it just makes economic sense. So that's, that's a light in the tunnel. Another light in the tunnel, and we see it very clearly here in Davos, you know, the business leaders in the world across all sectors, from construction, food, uh, transport, they're all on board and seeing not only the necessity, but also a value in moving in the direction of, um, of a fossil fuel free, sustainable, more resilient business models. But finally, also, science is very clear, and science has made tremendous advancements over the last decades and can today show, you know, unequivocally, you know, with, with, with of course, there are scientific uncertainties always in science, but we are, we're so far come now when it comes to, uh, you know, convincingly show that we have to protect all nature, we have to decarbonize the world energy system very fast, and we give the numbers on this. So we can today, for example, here at, at the World Economic Forum, we will be presenting for the first time quantitative, scientifically-based 
safe and just earth system boundaries. So the, the targets that every business, every nation in the world must stay within in their economic development to be able to stay safe. I think that's quite promising. So change is still possible? Change is still possible, even though, um, no, change is possible. And, and there's still a window open for a safe landing well below two degrees Celsius. Whether we can hold 1.5 degrees Celsius is today increasingly being, you know, really in, in, on the margin. Um, my conclusion is that we can still land at 1.5, but it will certainly, unfortunately, mean a period of overshoot before we can finally stabilize at 1.5. The challenge is that we just need to bend the global curve of emissions. Can we do that? Well, the answer is yes, if we just decide to do it.